Now, Trexone seems mm -hmm. to be the most known prescription drug for what exactly? Could you just tell our listener from maybe yeah. who's unfamiliar with that drug and that medication, yep. what does it do and who's it for? Yeah, now Trexone was developed kind of in the 60s and 70s and then finally kind of in, in retail medicine by the 80s for alcohol use disorder and opiate use disorder. And why would it work for both those problems? Now, Trexone is very much like an opiate. And in fact, the, the law or is they were looking for a kind of non-addicting opiate that would help with pain treatment. And they found this molecule in Altrexone. It turns out it, it fits really tightly. And for some length of time at the opiate receptor in our brain, in particular, the mu opiate receptor. And that is where a lot of activity is for opiates, but like codeine, morphine, heroin, they all work at the uh, mu opiate receptor, which has a lot of kind of concentration in our midbrain and frontal cortex, where we kind of experience pleasure and then start to learn to kind of repeat that behavior. So it very much is kind of right in the pathway of what becomes for many people an opiate problem where they need to keep kind of doing opiates to keep getting pleasure. And then because they get physically dependent on opiates and will get sick if they don't have them. What now Trexone can do is totally block that receptor in the sense that this is a molecule that goes into our grain to that other molecule, which is the opiate receptor kind of fits in there, but then it's an antagonist. It doesn't do anything. It itself is not an opiate, it's not a controlled substance substance, you cannot get high, euphoric, sedated, constipated on naltrexone as opposed to other opiates. So it's what we call in pharmacology an antagonist. It's going to a place where other medicines and stuff works, but it's doing the kind of opposite or blocking the effects that are normally seen with, with agonist or kind of proactive agents at that same receptor. May I ask uh, for you to elaborate on potential side effects for someone mm -hmm. who maybe doesn't have a liver disease yeah. or any kind of pre-existing challenges. Someone yep. knows they drink too much. They've been trying to stop for a considerable time. They're unable. It's causing marital stress. It's their blood pressure is increasing. They're not sleeping great, right? These are all behavioral things, but let's just say someone who's not maybe I would submit chemically addicted to mm -hmm. alcohol. Maybe they sh they've just got behavioral challenges and they're, they're finding it challenging yeah. and they don't have pre-existing health conditions. What are the side effects of taking naltrexone? Uh, yeah, I like that case too, because most people with the drinking problem can stop on their own. So they don't have like the physical dependence where they're going to go into a moderate to severe alcohol withdrawal syndrome. And that's, that's something that we often forget is that most people, even if you're drinking a lot per day, you can stop and you don't need to like check yourself in clinic to start that process. Uh, and then say you and I don't have other medical problems but we're dealing with heavy alcohol use and we want to try naltrexone. The most likely thing we would find is if we took a full dose right away, some tummy trouble, uh, kind of like new antibiotics can upset your stomach. That's very common, especially if you start right away on a full dose of naltrexone. Usually it does not produce actual vomiting, but you can just feel kind of queasy, fluey, nauseous, and loss of appetite. Then we try and abate that by just starting at a slower, lower dose and over the course of one week say, going from like a quarter of a pill to a full 50 milligram dose. Um, and then uh, other this kind of fluey, icky feeling it is more common when people start naltrexone than versus like placebo. And that can uh, also be experienced as kind of headachy and then overall kind of a flu-like feeling uh, over the course of a day or two when you start the medication. Again, we try and minimize and prevent that by having people start on a lower than average dose and then ramp up over about a week just to make sure they're not having those problems. Uh, and that's what the oral form. And then it's important to note, there's also a once a month injectable form that you would have to get from a brick and mortar doctor nurse visit. That is brand name Vivitrol. But there you get a, a large dose of naltrexone in an injection. And then it's probably more likely you have the kind of initial fluey, headachey feeling. We know from that medication, which stays in your body for an entire like four to five weeks, and there's no going back once you have the injection, uh, people largely get over these same sensations and side effects within a couple days. So by week two, uh, if I've started people on the injectable or the oral form, they generally are not having as many or or many severe side effects. That's the basics. It's really not worse than that. It doesn't give you allergic reactions. It tends, tends not to cause like drug rashes. It uh, doesn't interact with uh, other allergic processes like asthma, dermatitis, psoriasis. It doesn't give you dementia disease, doesn't increase 
or decrease your blood pressure and doesn't really impact your cognition, your energy, your mood. It's really not really psychoactive. Some people do wonder though, because it's suppressing kind of the, the opiate system and we do have naturally endorphins and we kind of have an opiate system because it helps us kind of regulate our day to day and help us kind of process environmental kind of experiences and, and what we like and what we don't like. Some of that is kind of based on our natural inborn opiate system. It turns out though, if I block that pharmacologically with naltrexone, you're not suddenly depressed. You don't suddenly hate food. Don't suddenly not want to play tennis with your, your friend who you like to play tennis with every week. So you can still kind of enjoy sleep, sex, socializing, poker game, blah, 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 whatever you kind of like to do that is not really kind of like raving and more kind of compulsive, obsessive behavior, like drinking all the time or overeating. And it's also been studied for gambling disorders, methamphetamine disorders that might help people smoke a little bit less, although it's not labeled as a smoking cessation treatment. Now, Trexone seems to kind of suppress this kind of compulsive, but not so good for me behaviors, including drinking. And, uh, and that, but we don't see the reverse side effect where it just like makes me kind of unable to experience pleasure or enjoy everyday life.